Good morning, everybody. You may riddle me what the heck happened to my president, but uh, there's a, a little challenge going on at work. And of course, we've got a little contest this morning. So please abide and be patient with this costume. Good morning. Uh, let's start with some uh, introductions. And I, I will ask your help. Your, I'm going to have to reel you this. Who's on the call? I know that I saw dust, our illustrious District Governor Dustin pop on. Good morning, Dustin. I know you're here. There you are, Dustin, you're muted. Good morning, how's it going? Great, I know it's also confusing in the morning. <laughs> I, pressed, I pressed unmute and then my <laughs> screen went to my face and it went somewhere else. So I don't know what's going on with this thing today. <laughs> Excellent, really me this, where in the district is the day find you, Dustin? I'm in my living room drinking my first cup of espresso. <laughs> Perfect. Nothing like home, right? That's great. Exactly. Excellent. Do we have any uh, visiting Rotarians this morning? I don't see any. Okay. I do see Sari here from Interact. Thank you for being here again, Sari. All right. Any... Uh, Guests of Rotarians. Um, good morning, President Ian. I have with me today Tracy Day from State Farm Insurance, and hopefully Angela will be joining us from um, Service Master by Chronic. Excellent. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, any other folks here that I should mention? All right. Let's get this day started. Um, Riddle me this, who has signed up for backpacks? Let's get a quick show of hands for the fall session. I know that uh, a list was sent out for to kind of segment the year, uh, but of course, if you are able to uh, sign up uh, at any time, you're welcome to. Uh, there's room for everybody. And then this weekend uh, at Ciencias Para Todos, uh, we have, I've seen quite a few folks sign up to help at the uh, Dia de los Muertos. Uh, would anybody who has been working on that like to say a little something about what that's all about? AG, I know you created the sign up. Uh, I'm not sure if you are the instigator or the flow of information. Um, I did create up the sign up, create that, create the sign up. Um, I believe the purpose of this uh, Dia de los Muertos celebration was to offer um, the children, the, the families um, out in the uh, North Arcata area, uh, some fun on Halloween. So um, uh, there's some pumpkin painting and a haunted maze, which uh, should be a lot of fun. And there's quite a few sign ups. Um, including a ton from Interact. So thank you, Sarah, for organizing those. It's awesome. Um, but it's great to see our club engaged with uh, um, another organization and uh, partnership. So thank you. It's great. Thank and you. Our, <clears throat> and our Youth Services Committee also is helping out that a little bit financially. We're helping with the, um, the prizes for the costume contest that they're also having. Fantastic. Thank you. I hope that's uh, very enjoyable for everybody. And thanks to everybody who signed up so far. There is still room. So if you uh, find yourself free on Halloween, want to help out, that would be great. Uh, I understand there's some garden work days that were postponed recently and are coming back up. Uh, I know uh, Carol and AJ had sent some information over. Would you like to talk about that for just a moment? Let us know when that's back on. Looking for Carol. Um, <laughs> Me too. So uh, Redwood Montessori School um, uh, are also interested in building a garden, but they're starting with a fence, and uh, that, and uh, they're in partnership with Open Door, who's financially backing them, and so um, <clears throat> they're looking for as much help as possible um, to help uh, put up uh, fence posts and uh, eventually put their garden beds in, and so they have designated weekends, uh, these next few weekends, uh, weather permit, to get those in. Um, I did manage to get uh, some help from, uh, I believe Danco is installing um, or dr uh, drilling a lot of the post holes for the fence. 
Um, so I think they're getting them started. And then uh, um, these next couple of weekends, those will get installed. So Excellent. Does that yeah. include this weekend? Uh, yes. Looks Great. like the weather's yeah, Looks like the weather will be clear-ish. So great time to start. And uh, Mike, last week you had mentioned a flag ceremony coming up. Uh, and I, I apologize, I missed the date and location. November 11th um, at the Plaza in Arcata, four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it will be a short ceremony, uh, flag lowering. Uh, we have our trumpet player from our group uh, doing taps. And uh, I've talked to, interact at um, Arcata High School. Um, I have uh, communicated with the city and got a permit, permissions and everything. We'll have some uh, blocked off parking for veterans close in. And mm -hmm. I, am, I know that it, uh, uh, John um, Houston, who is 98 years old and a World War II veteran will be in attendance. Again, that's uh, November 11, Thursday at four o'clock. Thank you very much, Mike. And now I've uh, taken the appropriate notes. I'll have it up on next week's uh, Save the Dates. Thank you. November 7th, of course, we have our district fellowship event with uh, the foundation celebration. Dustin, would you like to say a little bit about what that's about? I know we have some newer members who don't know anything about it. And maybe some older members who've never attended. You know, I'd actually, uh, Terry's here and she is our brightest, <laughs> shiningest star around the foundation. So I'd actually like to defer to her on this one. Sounds great. She's also our vice governor. For those of you who don't know, which to be a vice governor, you need to be a past district governor. And so I think it's more than appropriate that Terry take over at this point. Perfect. Thank Take you, away, Governor. <laughs> um, yes, the foundation celebration um, is usually in person, but it hasn't been that way for a while. So it's a Zoom and I've, I'm on the committee, so I've seen the slides and I promise you, please come on November 7th at seven because you're going to see our club name and a lot of members names on the slides often because we did so well for the Rotary Foundation last year. And um, it's a great way to learn more about where your foundation money goes. And it, um, it's really inspiring to see what our clubs have done with the money that we've raised for the foundation. We've made a difference all over the world. So please do come and, on the 7th. And if you need to um, hook up to the link again, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. It is a great way to get a look at uh, Rotary Beyond Our Own Club. Uh, it, it always is inspiring to see what all the other clubs have been up to as well um, with regard to foundation giving and what it's for. So thank you very much for arranging that. Um, and again, a great opportunity to, for everyone to participate because you don't even have to drive anywhere. So it'll be great. Uh, and then of course, December 4th coming right up. You know, we're into the last months of the season. We have Taste of the Holidays officially kicked off on our social media channels and uh, the press releases and radio releases just went out. Uh, from anyone on our committee, I know Jeff, you hosted a meeting uh, just this week and I'd like to hear about where things stand with taste. Well, first of all, you know, these posters and flyers don't come out of uh, the ether or anywhere. So I wanted to thank uh, Romy, Amanda, um, uh, Maggie, and, and yourself, Ian, for, um, you know, not only once these things are created, they have to be distributed. And uh, you've done a great job with social media and it takes many hands. And so everybody on this committee is uh, amazing. And so um, one of the things that you had mentioned when we were talking was that um, with every um, share that um, this get, um, like the Oktoberfest had, it, it equated to like um, four tickets being sold. So when you see these, um, get them out to your friend group, like them, share them. Um, get get the poster out and get the word out. But we're, we're we'll probably sell out. I'm hoping, but you never know. So please share. Yeah, and so we're still na nailing down. We're in the last part of nailing down all the vendors. Um, but for the most part, um, I think we're ready to go on vendors. But if you know of a vendor um, and they you think they may be a great fit, go ahead and let us know. I think that. 
Um, Maggie and Amanda are working on getting this out on, um, uh, on the radio and, um, and other media. And so um, keep your ears open and see if it comes out. That's it. Thank you very much. You know, I, I attended a portion of the committee meeting while I was on the road. And I got to tell you, this group has it so organized. They, they know what's happening. They know what to do next. Uh, so here's what all of us can do in the club. It takes literally five seconds. Go to our uh, Facebook and Instagram pages, like them, save them, comment on them, and most importantly, share them. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, I was tracking our, our Facebook visit stats and uh, watching as many of you were sharing our last event and then going over to the uh, sales and inevitably on average, like Jeff said, it's about four ticket sales on average per share from our club. So it does work. It makes it more visible. Thank you for doing that. And uh, hopefully we will sell that. That's the goal. There are uh, sponsorships also available on our website. Uh, when you go to look at purchasing tickets, uh, there's opportunities for sponsorship there. So thank you to the committee as a whole for organizing that. And thank you to the club for getting this off the ground and supporting it. Uh, we do have a sign up genius out at the moment. Uh, it is for the Dela de los Muertos that we mentioned a few moments ago. And then coming very soon, we will have the Taste of the Holidays sign ups uh, up. Thank you, AJ, for running our Sign Up Genius. It's a great way to understand the opportunities to serve and uh, get involved. Speaking of getting involved, last weekend, um, we had uh, some, some folks visit the vampires over at the blood bank. And uh, uh, Greg tells, or uh, John tells me that we donated a cumulative 10 whole pints and two of our donors uh, did platelets. I remember Tom last week was heading over there. Uh, but, you know, we had some first timers here too. Uh, Sophie, I, I, I believe this was your first time successfully uh, donating blood. If you're on the call. Tell us a little bit about how that was and if you think you'll be going back. Um, yeah, it was my first time. Um, I attempted to do it about six years ago and I passed out before they even like, I mean, I got lightheaded before they even sat me down. <laughs> but um, this time it went well. Um, I did I mean, I felt good, and then I had my blood buddy, Charlie. So, yeah, I think I'll definitely be back. Excellent. And then, Jeff, that was your first time, too, you told me. Uh, yes, Ian, that's correct. And uh, do you believe the, me? Was this like the effect this? of what you did there? Well, no. But, yeah, this was my very first time. And so it was uh, a great experience, and uh, I'm going to do it again. Excellent. Thank you to everybody that was there um, and was able to participate that day. You know, they're always open. They're, they're always, it's a continuous need in our community. Uh, as soon as we donate, it's pretty much used within that same day or week. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where it takes constant refresh and each of us can only donate. Uh, there, there's a waiting period in between. So uh, if we get uh, more people coming through there, and the supply chain is more stable and they don't have to you know spend all their time making phone calls to ask for everybody's blood so thanks for everybody who showed up that was i think a great effort on the part of our club to uh, help our community with that critical need let's do this uh this is just for fun uh i think i i've never done a poll within zoom but i'm going to give it a try so um a few of you sent in costumes and it's up to the rest of us to pick our favorites. So the way I've arranged this is by uh, the participant number. So we've got uh, five that qualify and one disqualified. You'll see why in a minute. <laughs> um, so without further ado, uh, Meg, I don't know if you knew that Janice uh, sent these in, but she entered you. And uh, uh, if you're here on the call, I'd like to tell us a little bit about your childhood. Five and nine. Uh, five years old and nine years old, I guess. It's just growing up in uh, uh, the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles in the 1950s and early 60s, I guess. Excellent. You know, I, I've always had a, a little problem with clowns, and uh, this is no exception. Um, what, do you remember uh, why you picked a clown in particular? I don't know. It might have been a hand down. You know, back in that, in those, in the 50s, <clears throat> 
my mom used to make our make our shirts and make our pants and I mean you did you just whatever showed up that's what they put on you <laughs> excellent well it looks like fun okay so there's contestant number one remember that for the poll coming up and then Janice uh, with some rather elegant wear tell us about uh, these costumes and why you picked them Janice these are from the um, now when I was a child, and they're from our fundraisers, and I was uh, painting the knee at the surface, and I was a bar wench at the pirate party. But I think your accessory there, the, the pirate that you caught, is an excellent addition to your costume. And I, I can see why he joined you. So very good. So contestant yes. number two. And yeah. he has a, instead of a parrot, he has a spotted owl on his shoulder. <laughs> As a woodsman, true and true. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Janice. Contestant number two. Up third, uh, you know, Amanda uh, went to the throwback machine and uh, I, I kind of, I got this weird feeling that she was being a little cannibalistic there, the pumpkin messing with the pumpkin. Tell us about this, Amanda. What, what was your childhood like at Halloween? <laughs> well, I dug through all my high, my, my high school Halloween pictures and college ones and none of them were appropriate. So I went back farther. <laughs> um, the, my, my um, like my mom always made my costumes. So um, one year me and my best friend were skunks no idea where that came from um and then this the pumpkin uh was the recycle costume so i was the first one to wear it and my dog was the last one to wear it oh. <laughs> all right there's number three number four up here uh, sarah tell us about uh you know it looks like your family's all in yes sorry i'm getting ready right now so i will show you my costume at the end of the meeting but these costumes are all from the Arcada Plaza. We go trick or treating there every year. So the one on the right, um, I think I was like a gypsy, belly dancer, hippie type person, and the left was just like seventies. Um, and I'm there with my nephews on the left. Uh, the one with the green glasses is Brett. The one in the middle is Asher, the cat person, and then on the one on the right is Dylan. And then there's Brett with the fangs, and then the Dea de los Muertos is my daughter Helena. And the little ninja is Asher. Looks like a lot of fun getting together that way. Yeah. So there's contestant number four. Contestant number five, you know, I, Bob, I don't know what to say. Is, is this what you really think of this whole thing? Uh, this is actually me when I got up this morning. <laughs> um, no, this was at our house in Wonderland fundraiser a few years ago. So uh, makeup courtesy of my wife. I think between the makeup and the full uh, in-character aspect, uh, this is one of my favorites, that's for sure. I, I just can't stop laughing. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, Matt didn't know that he was a contestant, but, you know, some folks with cameras are uh, watching for things like this in the community. He stopped by our Oktoberfest and uh, said something about German fantasy night. And, you know, I'll just leave it at that unless Matt's here to explain himself. I don't think he's on the call, so... Uh, number five, Matt Babich, ready to go for uh, Oktoberfest. And then this this last one is a, a disqualified. I don't get to play because I'm the one giving out the prizes, but uh, I do enjoy a little costumery. Uh, I've, my favorite character, I got to be a Jedi, make my own lightsaber. And uh, the, the guy in the middle, if anybody ever wants to hear my camping stories, that, that, that dude's real. That's, my kids call me Hatchet Man, and there's a scary reason behind that. And uh, over on the, the other side there, uh, my daughter, uh, Jasmine, uh, literally shrieked in terror when she saw me coming down the hall in the morning because she didn't know I was dressing up at all and didn't know who the hell was in her house. So <laughs> I was, uh, you know, living my glory days of hairband fantasy and uh, for better or worse, it was what it was. So quick it's review. Like rock, rock and roller Alice Cooper. <laughs> Okay, preview and we'll put the poll up. Craig, number one, Janice, number two, Amanda, number three, Sarah, number four, 
And Bob number five, let me see if I can get this poll thing working. Launch poll. Okay, we'll give you a minute here to vote. And uh, I think I can see tallies as they come in. Oh, yep, look at that, it works. <laughs> That's really cool. All right, it's a race. It's a race. Bob's in lead at the moment. Janice and Amanda are uh, neck and neck for second place. Sarah, you are uh, currently hosting for third. Oh, Amanda just took that over. Okay. Looks like we've got 100% answered already. All right, so Mr. Bob, um, I've got some prizes here out of my library of sweets. Now this this house gives out whole chocolate bars. You know, I'm one of those one of those guys. So uh, you got it. First of all, dark or light, generally speaking. Uh, I want to say light. I want to say light. Okay, I've got a really unique one here for you. Uh, this is a Dick Taylor micro batch, and it is called lemon cream pie. This is probably the most unique and different bar they've ever made, and I think you'll enjoy that. So I'll get that to you soon. Bob, awesome. first place for for uh, the costume contest. Up second, Janice. You enjoy chocolate at this time? And if you don't, you can share with Craig. Uh, do you prefer dark or light? Um, dark. Dark, okay. After my own heart. And Janice, do you like tea? No, okay, so it's not gonna be the Blackberry Bergamo. How about, do uh, you have an affinity for uh, roses or do you like nuts? No nuts, no roses. Okay, we're narrowing it down. Licorice, any licorice? Okay, okay. I think I've got one for you. Then I've got a dark with a salty black chocolate. It's kind of a Swedish style uh, chocolate there. Okay, so there's Janice. And then uh, up uh, third, Amanda, darker light. Definitely dark. <laughs> What's that? Definitely dark. Definitely dark, okay. Um, Nuts, no nuts. I, I, I like all, all things. <laughs> you like all things, okay. I think uh, we'll give you a seasonal try here. This is a dark mm. apple toffee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that it, it looked like it'll go with what you're drinking there. Okay. And, <laughs> That's you know, because there was... <laughs> okay. Um, one second here. And, it's... and then, you know, because we had so uh, such a small group, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play play uh, Halloween host to everybody here. So, Sarah, dark or light? Dark. Dark, okay. Um, do you like oranges? Say that again? Do you like oranges? Yep. Okay. This one is, it. Uh, when you open this up, make sure you pay attention now. It looks, it's a work of art. They literally infused an orange, a candied orange slice into that uh, bar. So it, it's pretty amazing. Hey, Ian, I have a question. Yes. Or actually, Karen has a question, then I have a question after Karen. Go ahead. Karen, you Go had ahead. a question? No, oh, you're hiding. It's the wrong button. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so are, is that the only poll question you're doing? It is, yep. So those of us whose pictures did not make the cut, are we going to... Oh, my goodness. Um, What's it? Maybe if you um, uh, sent one and I missed it, I apologize. Do you have it to put up? Uh, no, e uh, AJ and I both said we were we were cut. So we're we're gonna um, we'll give you our pictures for next week, and we'll we'll take the the prize for who is wearing their costume way too long after after Halloween. <laughs> Fair enough. I am so sorry. I, I kind of had to put this together last night. Um, yeah, I think okay. we probably sent them too early and, and they got lost in the shuffle. No worries. Just wanted to check we'll, to see if there was we'll a- We'll make sure everybody gets to see, uh, a chance to see who you really are. Yeah, uh, and, well, that, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, that could be <laughs> true actually, okay. And then Craig, uh, you prefer dark or light? Uh, dark. Dark, okay. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna pull this one out of the bag for you. This one, uh, is a uh, barrel aged with in a bolt whiskey barrel. That's uh, one of their darker straight nice. bourbon whiskey. Um, I've been wanting to try products. that one. So there you go. Great. All righty. Thanks for playing along, everybody. And I'm sorry I missed some contestants. That's awful. So um, definitely some prizes for you. We'll share those pictures and then you can pick. 
Uh, let's see, that was okay. Moving along, that was that was fun for me anyway. All right, riddle me this. That's all. That, that's all that counts, President Ian. <laughs> as long as I'm having fun. 